What's up, guys? It's Dom. Um, uh, I'm recording a new video today about what deck I think is going to win YCS Brew, what cards I think are going to have an impact and like have their breakout tournament, uh, as well as like what decks I think will do well but probably not win in my eyes. Uh, let's hop right into it. I think that the best deck is going to be Cash Tira still. Uh, Arise Heart is just way too difficult of a card to deal with. It makes deck building hard also because you don't know whether they're going to draw the, draw the, like, you don't know when they're going to try to lock five zones, when they draw the hand that's able to, or when they're just a rise heart passing. Uh, even if they're doing the combo that I think is, like, not optimal, but they're lock, they're locking three zones, that's also, like, dealt with differently than a rise heart pass uh, with the trap. So I think that because of how difficult and like, I think because of how diverse the options the cash tier deck has of how it can be played, that like some variant of it will win the tournament, um, is just too difficult to prepare for from all different angles. And we're still so early in the format that if there is a silver bullet, no one has really found it yet. Uh, I think the second best deck though is going to be branded with this gimmick puppet card. This gimmick puppet card is very, very difficult to deal with uh, for literally every single deck. It is just, unless you're playing pure gimmick puppets, but, <laughs> but I don't think anybody is doing that. So the gimmick puppet card is just very difficult to deal with. If you do not draw hand traps to like prevent it from happening, there's really just no way to like try to deal with it. You could try to side cards like, dimensional barrier going second and try to like skip their turn back maybe but outside of like preventing this altogether from happening i find it very hard to be able to like win the game after this happens it's just way too difficult um brand infusion again is a card with just so much raw power behind it when it resolves it is a card that just totally demolishes the game Except in the case of if a rise heart is on the other side of the table, then, uh, then I'm not sure where it goes. Like there's options like dragoon people can make, um, like we saw from John Wilkin and Charlie Futch at the last tournament. But I think this deck is very good and definitely could win. But I think Cash Tier is more likely. I also think it'll be more represented. Then in third, the deck I have in third place. It's actually a kind of a sleeper deck. It's the deck that Pack played at the last tournament. Um, this Runic Naturia deck has a lot of room to grow, especially with a card that I think will be a breakout card of the tournament in Ancient Fairy Dragon. This Runic Naturia deck, if you're going to play a deck that is combo-oriented, I think this is probably the one to, to play. The Runic cards outside of like Forbidden Lance give uh outside of your your cash to your opponent having forbidden lance give you like a semi-reasonable uh engine that can actually deal with the rise heart um which is incredible so i think this deck very well could win if some of them are still playing it um but i do not think it'll be very popular i think there will be like maybe 10 in the entire tournament but i think i think this deck will have the highest like entered into tournament to making top cut ratio and it is a sleeper pick to win for sure then we get on to the decks that i do not think will win um so this is like like if this is if this stuff is tier one and like this is what i think really can win this stuff is like the tier two and rogue that like i think some of these decks will have a hard time dealing with matchup wise um and these decks like if they run hot could definitely win the tournament like like if dark world runs hot this guy's not losing die rolls he's not getting a rise harder unless it's post side like this guy could just run away with the whole tournament discard your whole hand like if everything goes in his favor he could win but i find it very unlikely that somebody playing dark world just you know has their day and runs train on the whole tournament i just don't see it happening so this this deck is just too difficult to deal with how diverse all three of these different threats are and these are the main two that you have to address in deck building right now uh rise heart is very difficult 
as well as like this gimmick puppet is semi impossible for this deck to beat. So it's just not reasonable. Uh, I think these tier cards are going to see a little more play this tournament. Uh, like I said, I think Ancient Fairy will be a breakout card of the tournament. And Ancient Fairy being able to pop a field spell, get planet, planet search rhino, then you like special rhino and you just kind of can start functioning like that way. Uh, it's like pretty splashable in like the Stark World deck. Um, I wonder if people will find a way to like splash it into this Naturia deck. Uh, or if somebody will play like a punk deck, like good good card deck with Distrudo and what whatnot, maybe Rite of Armistice, who knows. But I think that these T element cards, if they are going to be impactful, it's gonna be with this with Ancient Fairy Dragon. Okay, this card is incredible. It coming back definitely shakes things up. Um and then the next two decks that I think are very good, like very good, but I do not think will win the tournament. I think this Trap Tricks deck is honestly just not all it's cracked up to be. I, th I think it is a good deck, um, but I just don't think it's going to be better than these other options, right? Like, if you're going to go a, co a, com a combo deck that you want its engine to be able to do something going second, like you're playing this Naturia Runic deck, if you're playing a, a combo deck that's like balls to the walls, try to win going first, you're playing the Stark World deck, if you're playing like the mid-range deck that sets back row and then has like a very very good boss monster, you're playing Cash Tira. And if you, if you're trying to play uh, like the deck that just like flood like floods your opponent out and has a lot of very powerful engine cards, you're playing this Despia deck. Like I just I just do not. And if you're if you're gonna play a trap deck, I think this Labyrinth deck is just better. So like I I think this Trap Tricks deck is like the worst of everything listed up here. Um, I. Don't expect to see very many make top cut, let alone win the tournament. And then I'm thinking this Labyrinth deck, like, it's pretty good. I don't think it'll win the tournament. I know Ryan Yu ran really, really hot uh, at the last YCS with it. It had a couple spots in top cut. But you also got to factor in that, you know, that was a team YCS, which just because the deck did, did well in a team YCS doesn't mean it can't do well solo. But why you may play this deck in a team YCS is is like if if you are one of the better players on your team, you may play a trap deck like this just so you are more free to help your opponents. Like there's not as much thinking involved, um, which maybe was why he played this deck. Maybe it was not. I'm not sure. It's, it's just a uh, like like speculation if he was trying to play a more simple deck so he could he could help his teammates. Um, I don't know. This is this was a deck that like we contemplated playing as well. Uh, I just don't think it's actually better than these other decks right now. And I think that, like, the first tournament of the YCS, like, the trap decks will... Like, the first tournament of the format, these trap decks will always do incredible. Um, the format is just not refined. A lot of people don't know what they're doing. Like, standards are not set yet. But now that standards have started to be set, people know what they're doing. Um, the only way I see this deck running really hot is if this Despia deck is also running really hot. Because this gimmick pu puppet card doesn't really give their deck a problem. Or it gives everything else a problem. And for the breakout cards of the tournament, again, I think Ancient Fairy Dragon, you know, coming off its leash, that card could impact the meta a lot. I have not uh, played a lot with it yet. I'm going to start doing a lot of testing with, like, Ancient Fairy Dragon stuff this week because I'm not going to brew. Um, but this card is definitely one to watch out for. It's very impactful. Uh... And then the other card, I think, has somewhat been overlooked. You know, we talked about how good these Book of, Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse and, like, these other cards are going first. Floodgate Trap Hole coming off these Trap Tricks. If, like, I think this, this card is just going to be played a lot in these Trap Tricks decks. And because it's played a lot in these Trap Tricks dececks, people may catch on and go, like, hey, when we're beating the Cash Tier deck going first, it's because Reflesia or whatever is sending Floodgate Trap Hole and they're passing their turn. Like, and people may just go like, dang, Floodgate Trap Hole is so broken. Like, if this is the card that's winning for us, maybe we should just play it in other decks. I think Floodgate Trap Hole could be a card that definitely breaks out this tournament and just performs very, very well. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, I'd be happy to answer them in the comment section. And without further ado, goodbye.